This is the view from Red Room. Welcome back to Red Room, and here is our model before we got started. I did a little bit of sculpting, inspired by uh, all the fabulous people on Instagram. And now we get on to doing the base. And it's the uh, standard PVA glue and sand technique. I wish I would remember to do the bases first, rather than um, stick the model on there and then uh, have to work around the feet. One day I'll learn, <laughs> but today is not that day. So. And now to add some interest, we're going to use some different um, textured grit from um, our excellent little uh, Ruin City kit that we got from WW Scenics. Just yeah, putting blobs of uh, PVA glue on and then sprinkling, sprinkling on these different um, gravels. Now adding a little bit more. So now we get on to doing the metallics, which we're using gunmetal from Vallejo for, because I don't like my lead belcher. And we're using tinny tin for all of the gold. So we're going to do all the black bits now, with the gaps in the armour, the gun. And now we're going to use Rhinox Hide as our base coat for all of the fur. Also using Rhinox Hide as our base coat for the leather strap and the bang on the shoulder plate. So we're using Bright Bronze for our secondary gold coat. This is um, being applied to everywhere but the recesses. It was a nice uh, colour gradient. I find this provides the warmth you want for um, the gold. Depending on what you're going for. And now we're going to use null oil, which we've transferred into a dropper bottle, so no more spills, which is why we're going to half of it. And we're going to use that as our wash for silver metal gun metal. Where later on I ended up using some um, Vallejo black wash because I find that that's got more sort of pigment to it and um, shades a bit better. Multiple coats would work too. 
is just a preference. And glorious gold from Vallejo Game Color as our um, true gold color that we're putting on. Using the same principle, leaving a little bit more of the uh, bronze exposed. Not quite an edge highlight, but um, you don't want to obliterate the bronze you put on there. Now we're going to use flesh wash, flesh wash to uh, shade this gold. I did try using some burnt umber Liquitex ink, but yeah, it's just not the right colour. I've been pining for chestnut ink ever since um, Citadel stopped doing it. Blue wash is how we're going to shade this shadow grey. Sorry, the fang. I need to find a more modern version of this because <sighs> number one, once it's gone, it's gone. And uh, number two, this is a nightmare for reactivating. Um, which is where, uh, if, in case you don't know, uh, you paint over it and suddenly, oh no, blue's getting in there. Which sometimes can be okay, but uh, yeah, equally sometimes not okay. Rust grey now is going to be our first highlight. Apply reasonably, reasonably broadly onto the armour. Definitely not an edge highlight like this one. And now we're going to use a glaze to smooth over that gradient between the rust grey and the fang. I only show using uh, water down the fang in this in this video, but I ended up adding a little bit. I say a little bit, probably 50-50 um, of rust grey in the end to get yeah, a properly decent sort of shade. But yeah, watered down a lot so it will uh, blend nicely. You don't have to do this. You may find it's perfectly acceptable to leave it. But yeah, very subtly blending the two. And one of the biggest, I mean, all paint dries darker than it goes on, but everything connected with the fang, aka shadow grey, whatever you want to call it, but the, all of the space wall colours all like to dry considerably darker than they go on, which makes wet blending, any kind of blending, a headache, because what you think you've got, you may find, oh no. This is the final result once we've done it all around the model. And I think you find it, it looks really nice. So for our edge highlights, we're using Fenrisian Grey. This is where you want to make sure your paint is nicely watered down so it glides. If it's not gliding, if it's a struggle, then add a little bit more water. Not too much, obviously, because it'll start pulling. We don't want that. Yeah, very fine lines just all around the edges. So onto the red, and we start with a base coat of Word Bearer's Red. It's a nice, deep, rich red. And we're going to do the eye lenses and the gem on the top of his helmet and the back of the wolf pelt. And now we have Mephiston Red, which we're going to apply, leaving the word there as red, in all the recesses as a nice shade. Evil Sun Scarlet now. 
used even more sparingly than the Mephist and Red. Notice I'm not using any of these colours on the wolf pelt. We will uh, do something different for that because that is a different kind of a red effect we're going for. And that will come in later. Now this has fast become my favourite orange even though it's not really what I bought it for but this is uh, Vallejo Game Colour Rust and uh, yeah we're going to use this to highlight the rims of the lenses and the pointiest bits of the ruby in his forehead. Now the shoulder pads. So, yeah, Avalan Sunset is our base coat. And I would advise thinning this down nicely. Yes, you'll lose some opacity and some coverage, but the result of that is that you'll get a much smoother finish. So just do lots of thin coats with it. This really came into its own when I was doing Biggie. It made a big difference. Didn't really like this shoulder pad in the end. Didn't really like the way it came out. Geometric shapes are the bane of a space wolf player's life. So, depending on your style of army you uh, and your painting, it's best to practice and get used to them. I find as long as you sketch out what you're doing, it's, it's and, and, it, and go in with a with an attitude that you know you're going to have to correct some things. It's not too bad. Just sketch out the triangles that you want to do. And then we can neaten that while we um, highlight the yellow. And that's what we're left with once we've once we're reasonably happy. Now we can move on to doing the rest of the yellow. So we're using aerial yellow or aerial yellow as our main colour. And again, just leaving the avalanche sunset in the recesses of the shoulder pad. But also correcting up any of the black that we're not happy with too. And then we add some white to that. And we continue the process. And and you will find, or you, unless you are, maybe you're very, very accurate. You will find that you will have to go back and forth and back and forth to make sure you get you get it as a, get to a point where you're happy with it. And now we're going to go back over all of our lovely gold that we've shaded. And it's uh, much the same principle as always. We're just going to use this sparingly so we get all those nice gradients preserved. But we brighten it back up again. I find this gives you a nice warmth. But yeah, you want to be careful with the um, the feathers of the the chest plate, the key of the, the quilla, however you want to pronounce it. And our favourite favourite paint, Shining Gold from way back when, which I love as a highlight for gold. And this we're using as an edge highlight. So we're going to head uh, highlight our black now, and we usually use a nice bit of um, 
Vallejo Dark Grey for this. And now we've got Administratum Grey from Citadel. We use a mixture of that as our edge highlight. If we were just to use Administratum Grey on its own, it's a bit too light. And I'm, I really don't like over highlighting grey. It's uh, black, rather. It's my. Yeah. It's, a it's one of my buttons. And this is where we decided to start using Vallejo Black Wash because. Again, it, it provides more pigment. We're going to apply this all over the gun that we've just highlighted, and this will bring down the highlights and make them nice and subtle, so our grey, so our black doesn't look grey. And we did the same again with the raised bit of the pauldron for the space wall icon, which I didn't really like in the end. You shabty bone. I really like this colour. We've just got, we just bought this. And um, it's a really good colour for highlighting fur. And obviously, as it suggests, bone. So, in order to highlight the red that we put at the back of the wolf pelt, we're going to use Word Bearer's Red and that new shabty bone. We're going for a much more pinky flesh coloured, hide coloured red. And then we lighten that up and leave the recesses as always. Ah, oh, the thumbnail. Nature's miniature palette. And then the final very light mix to, to the edges with. Well, we were going to use Rhinox High, but then we thought better of it. So we're going to use Doomball Brown. I'm going to mix that with the Rhinox Hive. And we're going to I like now for using this. And we've now assembled the model because with the bits that would be obscured by the guns and the arms have been done. So we want to create a nice gradient between dark and light here. So we leave the Rhinox hide at the top. And by the time we get to the bottom, it will be Wraith Bone. Just a, a pure mix of Doom Ball Brown now. And now the Ushabti Bone gets involved. the pelt we want to leave the darkest colour in the centre.
gradually using lighter and lighter mixes of the shabby bone and doing more brown to get a nice little colour gradient going. Then just pure you shatter bone. With the wraith bone as our final colour. And to do the fang, we're going to use a mixture of the Doom Ball Brown and Yushati Bone as a base coat. I'm going to highlight the, the top of the fang and the tip. I'm going to leave the middle bit as a bit of a recess. With the Wraith Bone as its final highlight. And then we'll use a new strong grey for the little runic talisman next to it. So tusk or fur now we're going to use as the leather strap. So we'll uh, differentiate it from the wolf fur we, we've just done. Now we're going to use some more Vallejo gunmetal to highlight the gunmetal that we've just done. And then but they had chainmail as our edge highlight. Don't want to go too far because it's gunmetal and it shouldn't be really shiny, I, I believe. We also use the chainmail as a highlight for all the rivets. And for the rivets on the backpack, we need to paint them black first and then paint them with chainmail. So we get some nice depth of shoe. We then watered down some paint, some black paint, so that we could pick out the rune in the talisman. Now, for the base, we want to use some Vallejo burnt umber. And we're going to just slap that on liberally with no great finesse. And this is where you can, the, yeah, the beauty of terrain is that we can use much. Mm, well, I don't want to be snobbish, lower quality brushes, but you certainly don't need to worry. And a Ministratum Grey is being applied to all of the stones on the base. No great finesse really going in at this stage. And that's what we're left with. So all those stones are now going to be washed with some purple ink. Another colour you need to water down a lot because it's very potent. I do wish Citadel still did inks. So we're going to use a mixture of wraith bone and tusk or fur to highlight the straps of leather on the shoulder. To highlight the base we went ahead and used the rust, the Vallejo rust again. And I'm using a dry brush and I'm getting all of the excess paint off using a tissue. And we do this very, very, very carefully and subtly because I don't want to ruin all the paint that I've just done on the model, which is why if I had a brain, I would learn not to do this this way. And then the final highlight with the base is some light orange from Vallejo. And it's the same thing, very lightly applying it. But it will build up. 
Don't worry too much if you catch the stones, you can easily correct that. You've got to think there would be some dust, there would be some overlap. The natural world isn't neat and tidy. For Mr. Autumn Grey again, which we're going to dry brush all over the stones that we've just washed down with purpley. Make sure that it's dry properly though, because it'll all go wrong. And this should achieve a kind of slate grey kind of feel. Now, this is where we actually did use the Liquitex Burn Umber. Um, what are ink? I think it will be a useful thing for doing leather and that kind of brown, but yeah, it's not the right one for, for gold, I feel. Maybe an antique bronze, it might be good. It's just a little too dark, a little too cold for me. And we're going to use some Ultraman Grey. And we're going to use it first to do the edge highlights on the talisman. And then we're going to use it as a final dry brush for the stones on the base. And yeah, I do like these army place, army painter dry brushes. I think they're very good. Now for the rim of the base, we're going to use Vallejo Grey Green, which I really like. It's always a headache thinking what to do, what to do with your bases and the rims. You just you can just go with black, which yeah, frankly is often a very good option. But you want to you want to pick a nice color combo. But generally, you don't want it to pull focus from the rest of the model, so it's, it tends to be neutral tones. But a brush like this is perfect for this sort of thing, because it's all nice and neat and straight. And the very last thing we did was uh, put some nice white dots in all the lenses that we've done. And with that, we will see the final results. And I will see you next time. Take care, rumors. <laughs> <laughs>